Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Gracious God, we come in your presence, giving you thanks for this opportunity to praise and worship you. We proclaim your name, the name of the Lord, for you are glorious, you are a rock, and your deeds are perfect. You are the God of love and the source of all good gifts in our lives. We acknowledge that you are the only living God and your love is unfailing. We bless you, Lord, that you are faithful and just. You are our provider, our comforter, our Alpha and our Omega. Dear God, at times we fail to love you and others as we should. But your love for us sees sin, yet you still love the sinner. Lord, forgive us when we fail to live our lives that reflect your love and the many times when we take for granted all that you have done for us. Transform us through your Holy Spirit and empower us to serve you all the days. Lord, you have taught us the way we should go. We thank you that you have been our protector, helping us to stand firm in you. We thank you for being our savior, rescuing us from the chains of our sins. Father, we come to you with thanksgiving and ask that you may give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation to serve you better. We pray that as we serve you, the eyes of our hearts may be enlightened in order that we may know the hope to which you have called us. Thank you for the strength and faith so that Christ may dwell in our hearts. And now, Lord, as the sun sets on this day, we reflect on the past hours and our moments of concern and thanksgiving. We are especially mindful at this time of the COVID pandemic those who may be in need, not only of our praise, but also of our help. Those persons who do not have enough to eat or drink, those who suffer in mind or body, those who sacrifice their lives of themselves and their families to care for others, and those who have been abused. Open to us, Lord, the ways we can help them for those persons who are in need of our action. Teach us to be humble. And help us to look 
to the interests of others first. So we may have the same mind, Lord, that is in Christ Jesus. We pray now that your Holy Spirit will guide us and our lives are touched with your loving kindness. Open our hearts to hear your voice. Help us to listen and understand your word so that we may respond according to your will. We pray all these things to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. my brothers and sisters. My name is Reverend Silbert Prescott and I am delighted to share with you in your devotions. Today I will be sharing with you from Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 11. It reads, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, our hope is lost. And we are completely cut off. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, there are few verses in the Bible that capture the crippling state of depression with the effect that this one does. If ever there were a verse in the Bible, that describes total desperation, it is this one. It reads with the effect of a triple whammy that descends lower and lower with each sentence. Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are completely cut off. Line after line, it takes us lower and lower into a slow descent of degradation painting a picture of utter hopelessness. This is how the ancient Israelites described their condition in the time of Ezekiel. 
The context of these verses takes us back to a period of Israel's history known as the Babylonian exile, which dates back to 597 BCE, when the Babylonians stormed into Jerusalem, capturing the Judean king and taking their most promising sons away into exile. This was followed 10 years later by another attack. This time, Jerusalem was reduced to rubble. The temple was raised to the ground, and a second wave of Judean deportation ensued. Among the exiles that were taken to Babylon was Ezekiel, who was later called into prophetic ministry. I mean, one could imagine what life was like for these exiles. They had lost everything that gave their lives meaning. Their monarchy, which represented political stability, was gone. The temple, which symbolized God's presence, was in ruins. And as a people, they were estranged from the land, which gave them their identity. Indeed, this was an experience far worse than they had ever imagined. They were engulfed in utter hopelessness. So, it was into this situation of utter despair that God's powerful presence was about to be revealed. It was over this dire state of affairs that God begins to cast a vision of hope for Israel as they languished in captivity. In this vision, we are told that he had taken the prophet to a vast expanse, a valley lined with bones piled in heaps as far as the eyes could see. We are not told what would have happened to cause such a devastation. We are not told what tragedy such scenes represent. We are not sure if it was the result of an epidemic or a war that had taken place. But it appeared that this was such a terrible disaster that there were so many deaths the community did not have time or could not be bothered about burying them. They have been left so long exposed to the elements that only bones remain. In the text, the word very is used twice to bring home the gravity of the dreadful scenes that the prophet was looking at. The bones were very dry and they were very many. After painting such a tragic picture, the Lord invites the prophet to consider the possibilities of restoration. He asks, Mortal, can these bones live? Poor Ezekiel, he does not know what to say, and so he retorts, Lord, you are the one that knows. He is then told to preach to the bones. And as he does, immediately there was a noise of bones coming together. Then sinews, then flesh covering them. And as if that was not enough, we are told that God breathed his breath of life, giving power into them reviving these bones, bringing them back to life. Bones that were dried up were restored to new life, living, moving, and breathing. What was the meaning of this vision? It was, friends, a drama of how the restorative power of God was going to be manifested in the life of the ancient Israelites as they confront what for them was a hopeless situation in exile. Listen again 
to how they saw themselves. They say, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are completely cut off. I mean, their lives were in total disarray. They were in despair because they felt totally separated from their God. And it was out of such a dire situation that God was about to speak to Ezekiel to infuse new hope, new enthusiasm, and new life for his people. Here, friends, God was about to use Ezekiel as a source of inspiration to his people in what was for them the most difficult and challenging experience of their lives, reminding them that they were not abandoned by God. Indeed, friends, this vision was one of the most hopeful visions found anywhere in the Bible. Yet, it begins in utter gloom and darkness. Here, friends, the message from Ezekiel is that no matter how tragic things may seem, no matter the magnitude of the crisis that you face, God is able to make things new. God is able to bring a new beginning. In the case of Israel, God promises to restore their lives, bringing the nation back from the brink of disaster. Friends, brothers and sisters, I feel that this passage is speaking to so many situations that exist among the current threat of the coronavirus. Individually, we all have come to places in our lives where we feel powerless in the face of this pandemic. Maybe this crisis has caused us to lose our livelihoods and we don't have a clue of how we are going to meet our financial obligations. Perhaps we are fearful of what the consequences of contracting the disease might mean for us. Maybe we are fearful about what it means for the education of our children. Yes, friends, the challenges for us at a personal level might seem difficult, but by God's grace, we can make it true. At a communal level, the challenges might seem no less daunting. Business ventures that held great promise has had to be shelved. Tom squares that once bustled and teamed with life and economic activity now feels like a ghost town. The chapels that once resounded with lusty singing and vibrant worship have now gone silent. Friends, as we look at the dry bone situation created by this pandemic, God is asking us a question. Can these dry bones live? Yes, friends. Our God who is able to make a way where there is no way. The God who is able to make streams flow from dry desert places in our lives is inviting us to imagine the vast possibilities he has in store for us if only we are prepared to let him. Friends, in this passage, God shows Ezekiel that a day is coming when he will bring new life into the chaotic circumstances of his people Israel, that they might teem with life again. Today, he wants to do the same for us. To the desperate situations in which people are saying to themselves, our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. He is asking us, brothers and sisters, can these dry bones live? Is God able to make things new for us? I invite you, friends, to imagine the possibilities 
that God has in store for us if only we will trust and place our hope in him. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we bring this entire nation to you in this time of adversity. The man on the street or the executive in the office, those who make decisions and those who are called to obey them, those who work to keep us safe and those who are rep recipients of their care. Be present with us, holy God, that in whatever we do, that our actions might be driven not by individual ambitions and concerns, but by the wider concerns for the safety and security and health of this entire nation. Bless us and strengthen us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore.
thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.